Hello, we are Saturday morning and nothing better than a full day of work ahead of you on a Saturday morning. <laughs> we are doing a seminar at CrossFit West Chase today. Super excited, it's the first time we're gonna be um, teaching people like our methodology in person in over three years, so um, it's gonna be great. It's going to be intense. Um, I'm not quite sure everything that's gonna happen yet because me and Dave as a combo things get really wild so um, it can go anyways the day will tell us we are setting up the booth the check-in booth so there's a class going before a seminar and I I'm sure some of those folks are gonna do a seminar and they have no idea how bad of an idea that was they're gonna be wreck <laughs> Guys, how's it going? Good. How are you? This is giving me chills because it's been how many years since we did seminars? Three. Two or three years. I did it for about 10 years of my life almost every single weekend teaching the CrossFit Level 1 and Level 2 for like a decade. Did it for what, seven years? Yeah, Cammy did it for almost seven years and we used to, you know, travel around and be in front of a group of people and it's so fun for us now to be able to be with you guys here because we don't get to coach many people in person anymore. He practiced introducing me to you. Okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Camille, and I'm very cool because I put my name tag on my pants. <laughs> you guys here, this course is good for six EU credit hours, so we're going to be here for six hours. And um, you can list it as independent study in uh, any, any major organization. Because there's so much happening in her body and so little research and things out there to help us. Everything is mostly, uh, all, most research has been done around men, so uh, we're obviously not the same. We're going to start with our kind of overview, our hypertrophy for functional fitness lecture. Then we're going to go through our evolution one where you're going to do a lower body training day. We're going to come back in and we're going to have a lecture about nutrition before lunch. Just kind of strategically positioned it right before there so you don't have to have like any remorse after lunch. And, um, and then after lunch we're going to come back in. Camille is going to give you a really cool lecture on the female body transformation. Uh, I'm going to follow up with a little lecture on programming and how you can apply this stuff in different templates. Then we're going to break for a workout evolution two, which is all upper body training. So all in all, you guys are going to get like two hours of, of hypertrophy training in today with some really cool methods. Now while we're doing that, we're going to be educating you along the way. So we're not just going to say like, here's the workout, but we're going to go through things. We're going to talk about what we're doing, why we're doing it, how to do it better, different applications. And I want you to just lean back slightly and you're going to pull your heel underneath your butt and just do a little one second squeeze. So you're going to pull, yep, for 30 reps. Give her like a, just a little extra at the end just to get the full, the full contraction as she gets more and more tired until she gets to the limit of her hamstring flexibility. If she goes any deeper, her back might start to ramp because she can't get any lower. So the movement's got to come from the hip and hamstring. Right now, they're doing their first complex, which is a hamstring curl RDL superset. It's a little pre-fatigue before we get to some of the heavy squats. And their butts are burning. That's what I'm known for. Dave, the butt burner lips. That's an example of a superset with movement redundancy. You're pre-fatiguing the hamstrings to get metabolic stress in the muscle with the hamstring curl. So it's definitely beneficial to have a good wedge to do heel elevated or toe elevated stuff where you can throw in this. If I were to take the wedge and have her heels elevated, that's gonna facilitate more movement at the knee and more activation of the quad. If I flip it around, and I elevate her toes, that's gonna to be the opposite. That's gonna be more range of motion and activation of the hamstring. She's gonna keep going, I'm gonna keep talking.
Chris Evolution, and then we have a nutrition lecture, uh, and then they break for lunch. So this is a little long, that first lecture was a little long, but there's a lot of information. What's fun now is after sitting in the seats for an hour and listening to theory, they're getting to actually practice the theory and understand not just what they're doing and why they're doing it, but what should be happening inside the muscle and things to think about and look for with an understanding of everything from cellular physiology to the mechanisms that are gonna help the muscles grow. So yeah, it's fun. <laughs>72 hours later, but what I find works most well for most people is actually once a week of just annihilating the muscle, and now you have time for that muscle to heal and remodel and grow back thicker, so by the next time leg day comes around, like you're ready to do leg day, you're not sore, and you're ready to push the intensity uh, again. Programming, this can get crazy intricate as to what exercises you're selecting, or the order of them, or the body parts, or addressing weaknesses, or how many chest days should I do? How many leg days should I do? We're not gonna look at it from that perspective. We're gonna really just look at different templates for applying hypertrophy into your training, depending on, and here's the big question, what do you want and how fast do you want it? Okay, because that's gonna really influence how much hypertrophy we're doing or how we're trying to kind of blend it all, all in together. She writes it in secret and she refuses to practice <laughs> um, And I'll kill some time while Cammy goes to the nervous pee. Um, from a 30,000 foot view, this whole day, this whole weekend is really just about body transformations, right? That's our expertise. We've done it ourselves, we've done it with thousands of athletes, and it's about manipulating the physique for specific adaptations. I mean, that's because this is happening, this thing of your hormones just all competing for attention because they get mad at you if you're not pregnant. Uh, they're like, dude, so I'm gonna make you suffer for two to four days and wonder, like, what's your purpose here? Okay, that's why. My goal with the training with you guys today is just give you exposure to as many different methods for you to get your hands on so that when you leave here, you understand what it is, why you're doing it, and how to do it, okay? All right, so let's break. We'll meet right in front of that uh, bench press bar and we'll get rolling. And she's gonna lift it up and she brings it right over her chest line and she's gonna perform eight reps with three seconds down and three seconds up. So if I'm her buddy, I'll count. are tasting the futures method so this is a, a lift where we're giving the band assistance to the bar to help them get peak muscle tension they're working to a heavy eight rep and the goal is weight on the bar maximum tension on muscle so if the bar ain't bending you're just pretending Exercise one was kind of like heavier mechanical loading stuff. Now we're getting into a lot of concentration work, a lot of metabolic stress work with an incline dumbbell press. So they're gonna work double contraction sets. They're gonna work mixed tempo sets where they go from slow and controlled reps into fast reps for a few rounds through. And then they're gonna end with a complex incorporating isometric holds. They're gonna do three heavy reps plus a 10 second hold halfway up through the press as the other partner is applying over pressure as they're trying to hold that static position. They do that three times through in the set. So all in all, I mean, the goal is to really give athletes hands-on experience with the methods, not only understanding what they are and why to do them, but specifically how to do it and how it should feel to execute the exercise and to coach the exercise. And she's gonna start by first performing double contraction reps. So this is working partially. So she's gonna do a half rep into a full rep, okay? So she does a half into a full, go. Half into a full. And she's just gonna keep doing this until she hits failure. Yep. 
Good. And so what I recommend you guys do, Ken is going to keep going. They're kind of like. <laughs> so the heavy movement comes first. He's going to do 10 reps with a three count down. Okay. So one, two, eight, nine, 10. Okay, cool. After he's done his 10, he's then going to put his foot on the band and rep out as many as he can without a tempo with band assisted reps. And she's going to perform a row. As she's pushing her elbows back, see where the bar is landing? It's closer to a hip. I don't want it to be up at the chest. So the chest that's no good. That's just going to be rear delt. So if she pulls a little lower, now she's actually getting into her lap. So don't think about the row like a pull. Think about it like an elbow push, like you're pushing back, okay? All right, so she's going to perform 10 reps of the barbell row. Hey, 10 reps, not so bad. Plus a 10 second hold, the contraction. She's going to hold it. It's really fun to see people re-explore their training and look at it from a different perspective. Because I think bodybuilding has a stigma, so does CrossFit, frankly. And the truth is, there are ways to blend these things together that are really exciting that, I, frankly, people have just never considered before. And it's like, uh, it's like getting a new toy, you know? Like you got all this shiny new thing now that you're like, all the potential ideas and applications uh, excite them and, and hopefully like rekindle their passion and, and their light and their fire for finding something new in training and having uh, the hope of, of, of more out there, right? There's more out there for them. It's just kind of coming up with different ways of thinking and training, but it, there's always a way. And so sharing this stuff to me is very important because it's had such an impact on my life and on my athlete's life. I know that this has a lot of potential just getting it into gyms and getting it in athlete's hands. Hey guys, if you've enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and follow and check out my nutrition and training program at furrowsfitness.com. This is where you're going to get everything you need for your body, health, wellness, journey, transformation to be the best version of you.